I am Sharanya Abhishek, like I mentioned, I'm in Chennai, and I'm going to be your host for the evening. I uh, got diagnosed with an autoimmune condition about six and a half years back. I would like to discuss my story in detail later. And uh, we're all waiting to hear from Dr. Nandita Shah, our presenter for the evening. Dr. Nandita is the founder of Sharan. She founded Sharan in 2005. She's the recipient of the Honorable, uh, prestigious Nari Shakti Puraskar Award from the Honorable President of India. She is also the author of Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. We're all waiting to hear from you, doctor. Over to you now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sharanya, for the introduction. And I'm so glad to be with all of you and to talk about this topic. And the reason I chose this topic is because the number of people with this problem are multiplying these days. And I really thought that it needs to be discussed. So as Sharanya was saying, uh, I'm the founder of Sharan. And Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And what this means is that, you know, today we're too far from nature. We live in concrete jungles and we're not really aware of why we're getting so sick and how to heal ourselves. But if we look at animals in nature, animals know how to heal themselves. And the reason we are getting sick is because we're disconnected from our instincts. If we were to eat and live the way we've been designed to by nature or God, it would be easier to be well. So if we can look at that aspect, that what did nature or God design us to do? And how can we even um, take this knowledge to autoimmune diseases? That's what we will be discussing today. So today's topic is autoimmune diseases, causes and treatment. And I want to say that I myself suffered from an autoimmune disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome means that the nerve sheath, you can see the diagram at the bottom is a normal nerve. And the one just above is an affected nerve where the nerve sheath is affected, not the nerve. So the nerve cannot function without the nerve sheath. And as the nerve sheath all over the body gets affected, different parts of the body just stop working. So for example, it's an ascending paralysis. So it started in my feet and went upwards. And so I found it difficult to walk. And then I found it difficult to move my hands. And then I found it difficult even to turn in bed. So I was completely paralyzed. And this kind of affection can even affect the heart or the lungs and can lead to death. But it's an acute disease. And being a doctor, I knew what I was suffering from. And it was still pretty scary, even though I knew what it was. But I decided that I didn't want to take conventional treatment. And so I stayed at home instead of going to the hospital. And I had somebody come in to feed me, to turn me in the bed, to help me with all bodily functions. And it took me about six months to get out of the bed. But it was a huge learning process because it helped me learn how the body heals and it helped me be confident that the body always works to heal if we do the right things. So even though in six months I was back on my feet somewhat in a wheelchair and then later on in, you know, with... Um, sticks, walking sticks, and so on. And it took some time to get completely well. It made me look at my life, think about what caused this, what I need to change. And so I can say I'm much healthier now than I've ever been in my life before. Now, I want to say a little bit about immunity in the first place. Our body builds immunity. That means it's able to fight any invading pathogen by producing antibodies against that pathogen so that 
It kills the pathogen and doesn't allow it to multiply inside the body. And if we have good immunity, then we very rarely get diseases. But, and I just want to say we are expecting a cyclone out here. So anything can happen. And if I lose light, I will have another light here. Uh, so we have to build our immunity to outside pathogens. But what is an autoimmune disease? An autoimmune disease is a disease where we are destroying instead of outside pathogens, our own cells, right? And there are so many types of autoimmune diseases. I'm just going to list a few commonly known ones, rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis and lupus and vitiligo and ankylosing spondylitis and type 1 diabetes is also an autoimmune disease and psoriasis and um, irritable bowel disease and Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and Graves disease which affects the thyroid and Hashimoto's disease also and myasthenia gravis and vasculitis all of these are autoimmune diseases and you know, if you were with us a little earlier, you heard about pemphigus as well, which is an autoimmune disease. There are so many autoimmune diseases. And today I have three of our Sharon facilitators who, like me, suffered from autoimmune diseases. And they are going to share their stories as well so that you get the confidence that these things can be treated in a different way. So I'm going to first ask Sharanya to speak. Sharanya already introduced me. And Sharanya suffered from multiple sclerosis. So, uh, and, and she has been on Sharan Lifestyle for some time and is much, much better now. So Sharanya, would you like to share your story? Yes, doctor. Thank you, doctor, for introducing me. So let me start sharing my story. About uh, six and a half years back, when my daughter was just one year old, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune condition called multiple sclerosis. Uh, I didn't know what an autoimmune condition was or what multiple sclerosis was. When I read up about it, it was very scary. And when my neurologist explained to me about it, it was very, very dreadful. My neurologist, uh, he immediately admitted in the hospital. He admitted me in the hospital, and after a week of IV steroids, I luckily got my vision back. My, uh, uh, I very, I'm very, very grateful to, to my neurologist for this. And uh, after the IV steroids, he put me on oral steroids, and uh, the oral steroids took a toll on my body and my mind. Um, it took a toll on my family as well. I was not able to walk straight. I was not able to speak properly. I was not able to, you know, uh, even, uh, uh, you know, touch my head. This one was very painful. The head below, above my, uh, behind my eyes were, was very, very painful. I used to shout at people who took care of me. And uh, I was also given a very, very, uh, uh, you know, very sad condition that I should not be exposed to heat. Living in a place like Chennai, which is predominantly hot throughout the year, I should always be in an air-conditioned room. That means I cannot go to the beach, I cannot go to the park, I cannot cook in the kitchen, I cannot take care of my daughter. So life looked very doomed and we didn't know where we were heading to. And I was also put on an immunosuppressant and that tiny little tablet, which was 14 mg, costed us 1,000 rupees every single tablet. And uh, it uh, costed 30,000 rupees per month just for that tablet. And it was not available off the shelf in a medical store. It had to be imported from the US every time. And my husband had to do a lot of paperwork. And uh, we couldn't see light at the end of the tunnel, like I said. And uh, life was going on. I uh, That's when we were looking for alternatives. And we found Dr. Nandita from Sharon. And uh, she said she could do a phone consultation. I was not even in the position to travel. So this phone consultation was very attractive and I immediately jumped into the opportunity and took a one hour consultation with her. And that one hour consultation, I did not know would change my life. 
I honestly speaking, I didn't know what she was talking, a whole food, uh, plant-based, everything looked very, very new and they sounded like jargons to me. But doctor explained everything in very simple terms. But still, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Uh, that's when she gave me a beautiful uh, sheet, a consultation, a synopsis of our consultation, uh, which explained what I should do everything from the next day. I followed whatever she said to the T for three months. And in three months, I saw, uh, yeah, I, I just blindly trusted her and I followed everything she said. In three months, I saw something good was happening in my body. The weight I was put, I had put on with the steroids was slowly vanishing. I had a lot of uh, pimples all over my body because of uh, all those tablets and immunosuppressants, all those vanished. I was losing weight. I was able to sleep better. I stopped my sleeping pills and I stopped all the pills other than immunosuppressant. And that immunosuppressant was very, very scary to stop because every time I uh, uh, thought about stopping the immunosuppressant, uh, my neurologist's words would ring in my mind. He would say, if you stop it, you may end up in a wheelchair and you may uh, lose your eyesight again. And... Uh, uh, while life was going on, I was with the immunosuppressant and uh, Sharon lifestyle. And uh, it took me another four, five months to get complete confidence on Sharon lifestyle. And I told doctor, I want to stop the medicine. Now I'm confident. She was very happy to hear those words from me. And she took two months to stop the medicines because I had a lot of withdrawal symptoms. And uh, yeah, now uh, this Jan, it's going to be five years since I stopped all the medicines completely. Um, and uh, I would say I, uh, I have uh, uh, pains on my uh, knees and my hips now. I know this condition is going to take a while to clear. And now I'm not at all scared. I know my body has been given the right condition and the right atmosphere for it to heal. And I can feel myself heal. The best part now is I'm completely off medicines and I've completely given control to my body and the right atmosphere has been given. And um, yeah, uh, this is my story. And I joined uh, Sharon to spread this message and uh, to, uh, you know, to uh, help people spread the magic. Uh, and now I'm a facilitator with Sharon. I uh, uh, give uh, healthy cooking classes and uh, healthy food challenges. Um, and it's very, very satisfying to see people improve, people's health improve. And I'm very, very uh, grateful to Dr. Nandita and her team. Thank you so much, Sharanya. And I just want to say that when I met Sharanya, she looked totally different. And now if you see her and her daughter, they look like sisters. She looks that young. So it's really amazing. And she's really doing well. And I know that there are little bits of pain here and there, but nothing compared. I mean, it's not stopping her from going on with her life in every single way. So that's something amazing. Congratulations, Sharanya, for all that you've done. And we were talking about these common autoimmune diseases. In fact, there are more than a hundred different types of autoimmune diseases that affect different parts of the body anywhere. And, you know, every day there are new autoimmune diseases being discovered. So that's how common it has become these days. I want to explain some terms. When we have a pathogen or any other foreign protein, it's called an antigen which produces an antibody response from the body. So the body produces an antibody in order to act against the antigen so that the antigen cannot adversely affect the body. And naturally, there's an immune response against any foreign protein. For example, against a, a transplant, for example, if someone has a kidney transplant, they need to take immunosuppressants their entire lives. Or if someone has a blood transfusion, the blood has to be chosen very carefully so that it belongs to the same group. And over a period of time, because blood is something that doesn't have a long lifespan, it will be it, you know, it, it will go out and the new blood, which is from the same body, will take its place. 
So you don't need to have immunosuppressants against that, but it is also a foreign protein and has to be selected very carefully. And if it's not selected carefully, there will be an, immuno, uh, an autoimmune response. To a vaccination also, there's an immune response naturally. That's why we have a vaccine so that we put a tiny bit of the antigen into our body to produce an immune response and that immune response will stay with us and take care of that pathogen if it ever comes to us again so that we can make sure that we don't get that disease. Also, we have a natural immune response to viruses and bacteria and certain medications and even animal products in our diet because animal products are not our natural food. Even though we've been you know, told that we are omnivores, think about it. Every single species eats instinctively, can forage for its own food or you know, kill its own prey and eat it whole and raw. But we can't eat the animals that we eat whole and raw. So they're not our food. So when we can, you know, allow a foreign protein to enter our body, we are allowing our body to possibly create an autoimmune response, an immune response. Now, why do we produce antibodies against our own cells? That's what happens in an autoimmune disease. In an immune response, an, an immune response is good because it's protecting us, but an autoimmune response is bad because now our antibodies are killing our own cells. So how does autoimmunity occur? Now I'm just giving you an example. Imagine that this is a diagram of, a, of the stomach. And imagine if we eat some meat, and it goes in the stomach where proteins are digested with the help of hydrochloric acid and enzymes. And uh, this meat is being digested, but the stomach understands that those same enzymes and that hydrochloric acid will not digest the stomach walls. How does it understand this? Because we are able to mark things as foreign and self, and we would only be digesting that which is foreign and not that which is self. That means we produce markers, we produce antibodies against what is not self. Uh, if you see um, type 1 diabetes, type 1 diabetes is very commonly produced in children who have had their mother's milk, who have not had their mother's milk, but who have had cow's milk instead of their mother's milk at an early age. So imagine they consume cow's milk and cow's milk protein is similar to pancreatic protein. So the body naturally produces antibodies against the cow's milk protein, which it should. But since the cow's milk protein is similar to the pancreatic protein, and the immunity isn't firmly developed, that cow's milk protein, the antibodies to that cow's milk protein destroy the pancreatic cells and type 1 diabetes can be produced. So this is just one of the ways in which type 1 diabetes can be produced, which means that when we allow foreign proteins into our body in an unnatural way, we are opening doors for an autoimmune response. Another thing is leaky gut. So normally, if you see the diagram on the left-hand side, you see uh, intestinal cells which are closely packed to each other. So nothing can go from the intestines into the bloodstream. But if the gut becomes leaky and inflamed, and it can do that when we consume wrong foods, foods that are not naturally ours. For example, gluten. We know that so many people have gluten intolerance. And if you see green fields of wheat, 
Have you noticed that we don't salivate? We can't eat that wheat raw. We can't, I mean, we don't feel like going and picking it and eating it. It's not our food. Yet, wheat has become so commonplace in our diets that it can, it opens doors for getting diseases. Same with milk. You know, every mammal drinks their mother's milk. But no mammal drinks another species' milk. You don't find pigs drinking goat's milk or monkeys drinking elephant's milk, but we drink cow's milk. But we know that it's not our food because every baby loves their mother's milk. They don't want to leave their mother's milk. But when they're first given cow's milk, do they ever appreciate it? And the answer is no. That's why mothers add sugar and cocoa and run around the child with that glass of milk so that over a period of time, the child starts thinking that this must be the best food. Otherwise, why would my mother run around me so much? And when they, we have children, we also give our children the same cow's milk, isn't it? So these are just a few examples of wrong food. If you think about it, you know, when we see a chicken or a goat or a cow in the wild or in the open, we don't salivate because it's not our food. So we've learned to eat certain things that don't belong to our species and that nature or God did not produce for us. So before I go ahead, I want to introduce Christina. Christina also got an autoimmune disease called lupus and she had a difficult story as well and she's come out of it largely. So I want to introduce her and ask her to tell you her story as well. Christina, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, doctor, for that introduction. Uh, I'm Christina and I'm 23 years old and uh, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called uh, lupus or SME when I was 19 and uh, it seemed really strange for us because I was a supposedly healthy child. I mean, I looked really healthy on the outside, even though I was consuming copious amounts of junk food and meat and dairy, but I looked healthy on the outside and I came from a healthy family. So everything seemed normal for me uh, until one day uh, I started noticing a lot of joint pain. I started noticing a lot. I was falling sick very often and it seemed a bit uh, strange. So after a lot of a lot of doctor visits and it was very painful, uh, eventually I was diagnosed with uh, lupus. And I remember the person who took it the hardest was definitely my mother, although it was really hard for my entire family. And uh, she just could not accept that her healthy teen uh, had to consume medication for survival. It was just a very bitter pill to swallow. And uh, it was her who was looking for different alternatives and uh, a long-term solution, uh, which was when we were introduced to a uh, plant-based uh, lifestyle. And we were initially introduced to Dr. Brooke Goldner who is actually a board certified physician who has reversed her lupus through a highly raw diet. And uh, that was really inspiring and it seemed like a ray of hope in our really dark days. And um, while we were researching about it, I remember the first plant-based food that my mother made to me looked so depressing that I just started crying. <laughs> and watching me cry, my mother started crying. So, uh, because we, we are a very, we come from a very hardcore non-vegetarian family. So this was very strange for us. And uh, it was at this time that we were introduced to Sharon and uh, we were very uh, lucky to attend their first seven day retreat because at that time I was in a very, very severe state where my joints were completely frozen and it was even painful for me to brush my teeth. So the seven day retreat seemed like a shorter retreat and it seemed like the perfect amount of time for me to understand uh, this lifestyle. And my mother and I attended it and it was definitely the best decision we've ever made. And uh, we understood how this lifestyle would benefit us. 
And since then, I've just been so passionate about cooking and healthy cooking, no oil, no sugar, and to still understand that food can be so delicious without all of this processing uh, that we're doing to it. And uh, I was so inspired that I was even raw vegan for three months, completely raw vegan. And I could see, I could feel myself feeling so much better. I was cycling, I was standing on my feet for hours, which just seemed amazing. And uh, when you feel amazing, you just believe in this even more. And uh, that's when uh, my medications were also cutting down slowly. And, uh, and my recent uh, blood report actually, uh, there are two parameters to um, measure lupus. Uh, one is ANA and one is anti-DSDNA. So in my latest uh, blood report, my anti-DSDNA level has also been negative, which is really, really such an amazing feat. And uh, I'm so grateful for Sharon. And I'm so grateful for Dr. Nandita to show us this lifestyle. And uh, in fact, we were so inspired by her that we have turned our dairy farm into a wellness retreat into a vegan wellness retreat. And uh, we even, we are just so excited to spread this with everyone we know. So I just want to say if you are at the beginning of your plant-based journey, then all the best because you are yet to witness the magic of it all. So thank you. Thank you, Christina. And Christina wants to be a Michelin star chef and run a restaurant. And uh, and she's going to do a course in the U.S. for that. And she's just an amazing cook, an artist, and a photographer. And it all shows in her food. Thank so, you. And her, their farm is the lilac farm, um, the farm that they converted from a dairy farm into a vegan retreat and also a rescue center. And so congratulations, Christina, for all that you have done. Thank you, doctor. So we were talking about how these foreign proteins can enter our bloodstream and create that autoimmune reaction. And Christina was telling you how she was a hardcore non-vegetarian. But when we look at the dentition of a carnivore, a true carnivore, and then a true herbivore, and then an omnivore, and then if we look at our own teeth, it's very clear that we're not supposed to be eating animals. We can't tear them apart. We can't pounce on them. And we definitely cannot chew them raw. So these are not our foods. And therefore, it's a foreign protein in our body. So whenever we put foods in our stomach that don't belong to us, either they are animal products or they are made of chemicals and things that aren't suitable for our species, they can create disease and ha havoc. And so we should always think about what are the most suitable foods for our species, the foods that we instinctively feel attracted to, want to pick and can even eat raw. And even if we cook them, that's fine. But you saw that Christina switched to a raw food diet to get quick results because it's always better to get to put the best quality in your body and raw, the nutrients in raw are always more than in cooked and nutrients are the spare parts for healing. So the more raw we can have, the more high quality foods we can have, the more organic foods we can have. That means without chemicals, the sooner we're going to heal from any disease. So in conventional treatment, you know, there are all kinds of treatments these days, there's steroids and immunoglobulins and plasma pheresis and HCQS and chemotherapeutic drugs. Like for example, methotrexate is used in rheumatoid arthritis and immunosuppressants like rituximab and biologics. These are, there are a whole lot of different dis, um, medicines for autoimmune diseases and Doctors often say that autoimmune diseases cannot be cured. But if we do the right thing, in most cases or in many cases, they can be cured and it takes a long time. So the current system 
of treatment is treating symptoms, trying to reduce the pain, trying to reduce the inflammation, trying to reduce the number of antibodies that are causing all this problem. But Sharan's system is a little different. It's about treating the cause of the problem. That means if the cause of an autoimmune disease is foreign protein, then we should remove foreign proteins from our life. If the cause of an autoimmune disease is vaccinations, then we should rethink vaccinations and check whether the vaccination is more important or if it's not really necessary at all. And today, you know, we're having more autoimmune diseases, but we also have more vaccinations for all kinds of things. So this is something that needs to be rethought. And personally, I think that I got the Gia Bare after a rabies vaccination. I had a dog bite and I was a little worried and I went for rabies vaccination. But then I went back and looked at the dog and tried to see, learn about the dog. And I found out that it didn't really have rabies. So I didn't continue the rest of the treatment, but I still got Gia Bare. And these days when so many people are taking um, COVID vaccines, we are seeing a greater number of Guillain-Barre in hospitals as well. So our treatment would be to avoid foreign proteins in any way, avoid animal products and avoid vaccinations. Of course, we can't avoid viruses and other things, but we have to at least avoid what we can so that we are less likely to get autoimmune diseases. And sometimes we get, when we get stress, autoimmune diseases increase like psoriasis and you know certain autoimmune skin diseases. So we need to reduce that as well. But did you know that animal products or consuming animal products also increases our stress levels? And that's because when we are stressed, we produce stress hormones like adrenaline. When animals are stressed, they produce stress hormones. When we consume animal products with stress hormones, we are getting their stress as well. So just imagine, you've seen those chickens huddled together in the chicken shops because they know that they, their turn is coming. They are stressed. Chickens that have to lay eggs, they have to lay 250 eggs a year. They are stressed. Cows that are um, artificially inseminated so that they'll produce milk. And they, so that they'll produce a baby and their baby can be taken away from them so their milk can be sold. They are stressed. So there's so much stress when we consume animal products. And if once we stop consuming animal products, you will see that your stress levels go down. And you know, vegetarians and non-vegetarians get the same disease and that's because meat and milk are both foreign proteins. They're both not meant for us and they both cause disease. They both have the same components, high fat, no fiber and high protein. And all of this can be harmful. So Sharon has a five-point plan. That means eat foods that are plant-based. Now, usually we don't remove all the uh, grains like wheat and rice, but for an autoimmune disease, it would be good to remove gluten and even grain if possible. Whole foods. Whole foods means have foods with the maximum nutrition. The maximum nutrition is just under the skin. So we should have whole rice. And if we have wheat, whole wheat. And vegetables should not be peeled. None of the vegetables, not even pumpkins or beetroot or carrots or potatoes. Nothing should be peeled except for those that we can peel with our hands, like onions and garlic and maybe peas. Or some root vegetables like um, tapioca or yams but otherwise we should avoid peeling as far as possible and of course we should have organic and vitamin b12 
and vitamin D should be checked and supplemented because in our artificial modern day lifestyles, these do get low. And so, and vitamin D is very important for autoimmune diseases. Vitamin B12 is important for nerves. We shouldn't have a deficiency of either of these two nutrients. Now, I did mention the conventional treatment and I don't want to say that we can just stop all the conventional treatment. We have to stop the conventional treatment very slowly because the conventional treatment is aimed at stopping further destruction of the organs that are being affected by the autoimmune disease. And that's necessary sometimes. So we should see the condition of the body, reduce the um, conventional treatment as and when we can by checking the immunoglobulin levels or the, the antibody titers. And then whenever, if we can, not everything can be checked, but if we can check it, we should see what is the progress of the disease, if the progress has come to a halt, if the patient has started getting better, then we can reduce the conventional treatment. But whether we are on conventional treatment or immediately start with our treatment, which is food possible so that our body can use nutrients as spare parts to heal. And recovery does take a long time. And recovery does take a long time because the antibodies that we have formed that are destroying our cells have a lifespan. And until they die, they will still affect us. So for example, every single cell in our body has a lifespan. Our red blood cells have a lifespan. Our white blood cells have a lifespan. When we have a um, cholera vaccination, the antibodies have a lifespan of one year. But if we have a tetanus vaccination, those tetanus antibodies have a lifespan of 10 years. So different cells in our body have different lifespans. Different antibodies have different lifespans. So we have to wait for those antibodies to die. And this takes time. It doesn't happen quickly. And once they die, or even as they reduce, the damaged tissue starts to heal. And so um, we have to wait not just for the antibodies to die, but also after they die, the remaining damaged tissues need to heal so that we can recover. And not every single type of tissue can heal. For example, I was very lucky that I had a nervous disease, but it was the nerve sheet that was affected. And the nerve sheet can regenerate, but nerves cannot regenerate. So, for example, multiple sclerosis, where the nerves may have problems. I mean, the problem is in the nervous tissue. There may not be complete recovery, but we have so much reserve that we can usually take it over if we start treating at an early age. So some important points that I would like to say are that autoimmune diseases always take time. You know, people can give you promises that this will work or this medicine will work, but honestly, it takes time because those antibodies need to die out and new tissues need to form. So just like, you know, if you get a fracture, fracture cannot heal immediately, no matter what you do, it takes some time. Same with autoimmune diseases, only it takes a little longer. But what you will see is improvement very quickly. So you see improvement, but total recovery takes a long time. And recovery may or may not be complete. Now, what's very important to know is what we can do. Just one cheat meal if it's on animal products, right? Like if you have a bit of oil here and there, or if you have a bit of white rice, nothing will happen. But, or not much will happen. But if you have 
animal products, then they could produce new antibodies. If you have a vaccination, then it could trigger new antibody formation. Then that would slow down the recovery. It's best to avoid animal ingredients in personal care products as well, because you know when you put something on your skin, it's absorbed in less than 26 seconds. So we should be very careful about what we put on our skin. Somehow we believe that, you know, skin is immune to everything and we can put anything on our skin, but we can't put anything in our mouth. And so we have to be careful of both of these things as far as possible. And vaccinations should be avoided, especially if there's um, no urgency for the vaccination or especially if there's like um, if the, vac the vaccine is more harmful than the disease. And talks like these can never replace a personal consultation because each disease is, has to be individualized. Reducing medications needs to be closely monitored. I'm going to invite Sh um, Shalu to speak and Shalu has been with us for some time and Shalu got into, Shalu was also a confirmed carnivore and she got into whole food plant-based because her husband suffered from a terrifying autoimmune disease called ankylosing spondylitis. So Shalu, would you like to share your story? Sure, doctor. Thank you so much, doctor. And I'm really happy to be... Um to have this platform to share my story um, with all of you. So um, as doctor said, my husband um, was diagnosed with uh, this autoimmune condition called ankylosing spondylitis. That was a time when I was successfully running my bakery business in Bangalore. And I was living my dream of being, you know, a successful baker, uh, top rated bakeries. And, you know, I was uh, doing um, something which I always dreamt of doing professionally. But um, I saw that my health was not so good. My per personal health, like my immunity was not so good. I used to get a lot of infections. And um, I also saw that my husband was having a lot of back pain and he was not uh, uh, able to even sit, stand, walk and even go to the washroom um, without having a lot of pain. He was diagnosed with this disease for which the doctor said that there was no treatment anywhere in the world. And all we could do was keep on taking painkillers and steroids throughout life, which would just control the symptoms, which would just reduce the pain temporarily. Um, and he he had these symptoms since he was 14. It took him almost um, uh, 10 to 12 years to get the disease diagnosed because nobody knew about this disease at that time and nobody knew about autoimmune diseases. It was so rare that time. Um, and um, he was um, also because we started on the medicines which the doctors gave us and uh, we took the medicines for two, three years. And as a side effect of these medicines, he also developed diabetes and hypertension at the age of 31. He also gained a lot of weight. He was 110 kgs. His HPA1C was 13. And it was so scary that the doctor said us um, that anything can happen anytime and we are not able to control it. So we were like super scared and super desperate. I was very, very desperate to get him out of the situation. And I realized that, you know, no matter how successful I am professionally, nothing makes sense if I'm not able to enjoy that success with my family. If my family is not healthy, if I'm not healthy, you know, then nothing makes sense. So I started looking for alternatives. I researched on the internet and I came to know that there are a few people in the world who have reversed this disease only with the help of a few diet and lifestyle changes. So I ordered their books and I started reading and I started applying those changes. Uh, so in one of the books, I came to know that a plant-based diet may help. So from being typical, you know, non-vegetarians eating non-veg every day, and I'm a Punjabi. So I've eaten my parathas with white butter and ghee throughout my life. And I felt my day was incomplete without a ghee loaded paratha. And from that, you know, we just uh, converted uh, to completely vegan and we um, eliminated all animal products and we started seeing some real improvements. Um, 
while on this journey i also came across sharan and i came to know about the whole foods part also not to have anything processed or refined and we slowly slowly started making those changes also so we went whole food plant based and that's when we saw that the magic happened uh, in one month my husband uh, was able to reverse his diabetes he was able to reverse his hypertension so the diabetes and hypertension medicines went away in 3 months he was able to get rid of all his painkillers and steroids and in one year he lost uh, 30 kg of weight his hba1c came down to 5.4 and you know it was so amazing earlier uh we had uh, my son was born and my husband was not able to take a newborn baby in his arms and play with him and now he was you know just running around uh with with the kids and he was cycling he was swimming he was from a person who wasn't able to walk till the washroom he became a person who's walking now 10 to 12 kilometers every day and he's able to do everything whatever he wanted to do and enjoy his life live his life to the fullest so all thanks to this lifestyle um i was able to get my husband back my kids were able to get their father back and my husband got his life back so it has been a blessing and i really um wanted to help uh, people with whatever little bit experience and knowledge that i have gained because after my husband recovered i studied nutrition i stopped my bakery business i sold off my bakery and i uh, decided to uh, pursue this i decided to pursue nutrition and i decided to help as many people as possible with this so now i'm with sharan i trained under dr nandita shah as a nutrition consul uh, consultant and now um i do consultations at sharan i do cooking classes i'm also a facilitator with sharan so i conduct all the talks and you know sessions wherever possible and try and help as many people as possible so it has been an amazing journey and um to all those of you who are suffering from this autoimmune condition i would just like to say that you know if there is a way to get better um then this is the best way this is the most natural way and this is the most i would say comfortable way not initially maybe but um over the long term this is the easiest way to get better with any autoimmune condition and there are just a few points which i would like to share with you which really helped my husband um first was like after going whole food plant based um he was seeing a lot of improvement but when he left gluten he saw some really amazing results so that is something which may not be true for everyone but in my husband's case it really helped so i wanted to share that and then um when he practiced started practicing intermittent fasting that also truly truly helped him um and uh, also we actively decided to take care of his work stress and reduce it as much as possible so that helped and then he used to sleep very less he used to sleep 5 5 and a half hours so we tried to increase that a little bit and you know make sure that he doesn't have to get up to look at the kids or you know he, his sleep is proper he is getting deep sleep much better sleep now so now he tries to sleep 6 and a half to 7 hours so that also helped and then one more thing was uh his vitamin d levels were really low earlier so now i make sure that his vitamin d levels don't go below 40 and we monitor that you know every 6 months we get a uh, blood test done uh, sometimes it's annual also and we try to maintain the vitamin d levels so these are a few points which i think truly helped him um and having said all of this i would also like to mention that uh, even though he's much much better like we couldn't have imagined him to uh progress so much and you know to get better and to reach this stage but still uh before we came to know about this lifestyle there was some fusion in his neck area so in ankylosing spondylitis the spine starts to fuse so there the fusion had already uh, happened in the neck area and it's still there it, the fusion hasn't gone but the pain that was associated with that fusion that has gone and um i don't think that you know it's getting any worse it's getting better because he's able to exercise and all so i'm hoping that you know um from here it is not going to uh, get any worse whatever fusion has happened um even if it's still there even then you know he's doing really good and i'm really happy that you know before it was too late we were able to uh, apply this lifestyle and uh, make these wonderful changes so yeah that was about my husband's story and um uh, thank you so much shalu congratulations for all that you've done 
because I know it's been a long journey and from an amazing bakery business with three bakeries, you're doing something totally opposite. And, you know, and I know that you had to close your bakery business because you couldn't um, use those ingredients anymore. And that's something I really appreciate of all our facilitators that, you know, they are living the talk and they themselves have benefited. And that's what they're sharing. And, you know, it was really nice how you shared everything about your husband. And uh, also what she shared was that there's a part that could not be reversed, which was the part that is already ankylosed, right? Once it's fused, you can never get it back but at least I've seen her husband and I've seen how active he is and I know how inactive he was so that's a huge difference and same with Sharanya you know who was losing her eyesight and now you know everything is fine and she's totally active very active in fact and has her own business so I want to show everyone how we can um how you can book a consultation. And I'm just going to share our website so you can see that. You can just go to our website and go here to book a consultation or click here to book a consultation and then you'll get all the information for consultation. But if you can't do all that, you can even call this number over here and someone will help you book a consultation. You know, Christina told me that like she she got more interested in cooking than ever before once she turned vegan. Christina, do you want to share that story with them? Yeah, sure, doctor. Um, like I mentioned before, I used to have uh, chicken and everything almost three times a day, not even once. Uh, and it was just... Um, it was just too much for my body, I think. But uh, when I got to know about the alternatives and I got to know how delicious they tasted, I just, I couldn't believe that I was putting my body through all this for all these years. And uh, yeah. Thank you. So I just want to say that I've got a lot of patients with vitiligo who have got better and a lot of patients who still are on their way. It's not something that you can get better very quickly, but you can start seeing the changes, right? And if you have vitiligo, that's one of the best autoimmune diseases you can have because that's not really any long-term damage, right? So there's psoriasis, vitiligo. These are things that are much more tolerable because they're not harming important tissues and they can heal. So I would say don't wait, just change your diet. If you either have an autoimmune disease or if you would like to prevent autoimmune diseases or even if you would like to just get to your highest health potential. So doctor, I would just like to share uh, that, you know, initially my kids did not used to have a lot of fruits. And then once we started having them, we every evening I used to give them some fried snacks earlier. And when uh, in the evenings we started sitting with a big platter of all the colorful fruits, you know, different types of fruits. My kids, I, I never told them that you come and you now you have to eat this. They automatically, they were attracted to those colors and they started coming and saying, Mama, can I try this? Can I also eat this with you? So that happened automatically and it was effortless. <laughs> So we started having a big bowl of fruits uh, and a green smoothie for breakfast every day. Uh, just like uh, Shalu's kids, my daughter, uh, she was having uh, dosas and idlis and um, upma for breakfast. One fine day, she said, uh, this is not suiting me. I want to have fruits as well. So before she goes to school, she has a big bowl of fruits and goes and uh, grains and cooked food comes only for lunch for her. So this was the decision she took by herself and she's seven and a half. So it's so natural, right? And I think it's the best gift that we can give to our kids as well. And you know, I have many patients whose parents tell me my ch children don't eat, but the, I see the children running around so active and I say, how can they be that active if they don't eat? And you know what they're eating? fruits and vegetables raw 
they don't eat cooked food, so their parents think they're not eating food. So we have to change our mindset. All right. So yeah. thank you so much, uh, doctor, for that end talk and a very powerful talk and uh, answering a few questions as well. All right. So with this, we uh, uh, we would uh, like to uh, conclude our session for now. And uh, doctor had uh, very beautiful what an auto condition is, what are the causes and what is its treatment. This is just an introduction to you. And uh, this talk is to tell you that autoimmune diseases can be kept at bay, can be cured as well. So we three are there to, you know, our standing testimonials. Um, I hope uh, we inspired you and uh, hope uh, this talk really gave, uh, let you see light at the end of the tunnel. So your, like Christina mentioned, the magic is yet to happen. All right. Thank you so much, Shalu. Thank you so much, Christina. And thank you so much, doctor, for this wonderful talk. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we wish you all a healthy journey from now. Thank you all for attending and thank